Jared, high thinking is for you. Um, I should say at this juncture that we've had a wonderful, fantastic day due primarily to the force of nature, the whirlwind, that's Jared Cohen, and I hope that you all join me in thanking Jared for the brilliant work and the energy and the dynamism he's brought to, to this agenda and helping mainstream it in the way that it has. I remember three, three and a half years ago when I wrote The Islamist up and down Muslim communities globally to speak out against extreme Islamism was seen to be selling out, but here we are today not just talking about extreme Islamism, but embracing extremisms and violent extremisms of other varieties. Now what that does more than anything else, I think, is opens up the public space for discussion and debate by getting beyond the left-right divide. In other words, it's not Muslim bashing, it's not picking on any one particular community, but we're talking about a phenomenon, as Jared eloquently highlighted this morning, that's global. And I'll return to this theme of globalism in a moment, but I just want to say, time is short and you've got much to do this evening, so the first point for me as a takeaway was the repeated mention of issues such as identity and the, the lack of a sense of belonging, almost across the board. At that juncture when someone is 14, 15, 16, who's meeting people up and down the world globally, from the US all the way uh, to, to say, say Indonesia, which came up in other parts of the world? We don't have solid answers yet, and given that large numbers of people have access to social media and uh, other outlets, that may well be something worth thinking about, and we'll return to those themes tomorrow. A second theme that came out um, for me today was the deep, remarkable intelligence of the formers. We're not talking about people who were somehow vulnerable because they didn't have an education. We're not talking about people who can't think for themselves. We're not talking about people who are cons constantly marginalized because of the obvious factors. But these were intelligent people who you know, walked intellectually into this path emotionally in many cases, and then walked out again, de-radicalizing themselves before any de-radicalization program in any part of the world had been set up. And I think that's the depth of the challenge we face. If intelligent people can walk that path, then what of others who don't possess that intelligence and then go the whole hog towards violence and they're not here today? And conversely, what of, what of the majority of people who also face victimhood and other issues that many of our former spoke about, but don't walk the path of extremism or violent extremism. What is it that holds them back? A third big issue I, t I take away today is the role of parents. Um, not just in my own personal situation, but from the first panel onwards, the role of mothers in particular came out. The role of women, the role of mothers, and other family members came out repeatedly. Let's think about last year in the Detroit bomber. It was his father who went to the US Embassy and alerted the CIA to the fact that his son was missing with Anwar Awlaki in Yemen. And I think that's instructive to see the role of parents and how they then join up with governments. And I think we have a panel on the theme tomorrow and see where that goes. And the final point is this, that this is not contrary to the thinking of many of the people, I think, who were skeptical of, of this uh, event, that this is not local development. Yes, for the individuals it's local, but these are issues that are playing out globally. And we've, you know, from, from, from Israel to Nigeria to Indonesia to Australia to Britain to America to Canada, we've gone globally and we've seen that it's a global phenomenon. Which then takes me to my own organization, the Council on Foreign Relations, uh, where America's premier think tank on foreign policy issues. And it's worth, I think, thinking about tonight the, the following two themes um, in your gatherings, in your, in your meetings, and as we go through tomorrow. The following two things. One, um, what can governments do differently? I know from my own experiences, it was a lack of intervention by Western governments and others in Bosnia and the free fall of Muslims and others in the Balkans that led to my generation thinking, if, it, if this can happen to white, blonde, blue-eyed Muslims in Bosnia, it can happen to people like me and others across Europe. Now we're seeing intervention in Libya, but it's taking a different turn. Foreign policy is difficult, but what can governments do to alter policy grievances that then lead to radicalization and violent, uh, violent extremism. And the last point I think that's worth thinking about going ahead tomorrow, and this is something that's come up again and again, and for our American friends in the audience, it might have missed their attention, the constant reference to resources. Um, I think it's a European complex way of talking about money. Uh, I ran uh, and I co-founded a, a, you know, a, a think tank in Britain with my good friend Majid Nawaz, the Quilliam Foundation. One of the struggles that we found, in, in addition to taking on, you know, quote unquote, the bad guys repeatedly, was constant lag of fundraising. In other words, our enemies were getting funded by Saudi Arabia and Iran. Who were we to turn to? 
turning to the British government and other governments discredits these organizations that are out on the ground and many of the fantastic people here in this room. The government association discredits the counter-narrative. Therefore, it's imperative that NGOs and others step up to the mark. And I think one of the things we can start thinking about tomorrow is something Owan Zarate has spoken about repeatedly in Washington, D.C., is a global fund of some sort that good people like you can apply to that's neutral, that's no, no strings attached, but does the fabulous work that you do without having to think about fundraising constantly. So I'll end here and uh, much looking forward to talking to you throughout the evening and tomorrow. Thank you very much for listening.